tonight on Hip on the Spot News. The Apache Longbow is on the prowl in this year's world. Our AI friends group is getting bigger with George, you know George. The Soviet Union makes another MiG-19 trailer for propaganda reasons. And we get a good glimpse at the upcoming South Atlantic map in this year's world. This and more on how I play. Hello virtual pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS world. And we start with a South Atlantic map. Razbam released a future video depicting their hard work on the map. Of course, everything we see is still working progress, but things are shaping up and we are looking forward to experience this map once it's finally released in DCS world. As we covered before the South Atlantic map here on the channel, I will only make a reminder of what to expect. Until so far, we know that the map will cover the Falkland Islands and the bottom of Argentina and Chile with huge distances to cover in our Harriers. Other aircrafts can be used aside from the Harrier. The narrator is only exemplifying the most obvious choice due to lack of creativity since he started a normal job. We will have the opportunity for multiple mission types and a lot of air-to-air -air refueling. From the video released by Razbam, we notice a few iconic locations like Port Stanley and the MPAA Mount Pleasant airfield. Plenty of mountain peaks and yes, yes, that's an AI F-15E with what looks like Flaming Tree Cliffs cockpit at this time. Looking forward to see this module being released as well. Now the map has a lot of positive remarks and many of you are hyped for the release. Funny remarks like making sure that they add penguins as static objects are also on people's minds. Sooner or later, we will get the chance to expand the DCS theater of operations once again. Now moving on, we cannot avoid talking about the A864D. The Apache is available for pre-order with a 30% discount from its release price and it will be in our hands very soon. We got to see the recent release trailer and I gotta tell you, the hype is real. They just need to, you know, insert the command, turn the key and press the red button so the module can be released. At least that's how I picture it. So let's recap from what we know so far. The AH-64D will offer a multi-crew experience combined with an impressive set of sensors and weapons. So get ready to fly and your buddy to shoot. Or something like that. ED mentioned that they are making significant improvements to helicopter AI algorithms. And if Comrade Petrovich feels a bit rough around the corners at this stage, well, make way for George. From what I understand, we will get an enhanced command interface to communicate with our AI co-pilot. We will see later if this will differ or not from the hind AI commands. Still, with the early access release, we will get the following weapon systems. The obvious ability to use the 30mm chain gun, the 2.75 rockets, the AGM 114K Hellfire and anti-tank guided missiles in direct, low and high modes. We also get to use the external fuel tanks, thank you very much, the IHADs, MPNVS and MTADS systems and sensors, the linear motion compensator, tactical situation display with moving map, hopefully for all the maps available in DCS. If not, you come to me and I install them for a very good price. Ok, we will get the defensive systems that include a common missile warning system, chaff and flare dispensers and radar warning receiver, so we are not going to be sitting ducks on the battlefield, makes sense. And for night operations, we get the night vision goggles. And for those of you excited to do a bit of border patrol in the mighty Apache, the searchlight will be up and ready to do some spotting. And lastly, for the early access features, we will get the US Army and other paint schemes and training missions. Looks good. And then for the final release, somewhere in the future. The Apache will feature the fire control radar and radio interferometer with the addition of the radar guided mode for Hellfire missiles. Boy oh boy, I cannot wait to rain them on unsuspecting targets. Still in the future, we will get a data link system to share and assign targets between flight members, plus the multi-target tracker or MTT, the laser warning system, radar jammer, the anti-ice system and advanced damage modeling with additional liveries plus a livery template for our great community of livery makers. And finally, as tradition, a campaign by Eagle Dynamics. As for our VR users out there. Well, it seems that the AH-64D will provide exceptional operations immersion when played in VR. 
Every time they mention VR, I get excited. And I just can't fight it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Ah, seriously, who messed up my script? Coming back, two hours ago, ED shared these pictures showing off the pilot and co-pilot gunner helmet that will be integrated with new detailed pilot models, planned to be available at the early access launch. Rotor enthusiasts are very lucky this year in DCS world. And if the Apache and the Hind don't interest you, well, maybe the Eurocopter will. I know, I know, it's hard to believe, but it's true. The AS350 and the 550 Fennec will be implemented in DCS world as mods using the AH6 flight model. Jinx DCS and Foxtrot Oscar Simulations Design got together to form Project Squirrel in order to provide a couple of free of charge realistic helicopters for the DCS community. Quality and realism being their core tenants in every mod they make, they are striving to match the experience as close as possible to the real thing. The 3D model is based on the one used by Nemeth Design for FSX and P3D and Dreamfoil Creations for X-Plane. They are also mentioning multi-crew and of course the civilian and military versions for the helicopter. No release date at this time, the mod being in pre-alpha as we speak. I link their Discord in the video description for more information. We will continue to monitor the situation as time goes by. For our Tomcat fans out there, there is a complete guide for the upcoming Jester AI Lantern control made by our fellow YouTuber Redkite. The feature will be coming next week with the open beta update for DCS World. This will give users that like to fly solo a great new mechanic for dropping bombs in the F-14 using the targeting pod in multiple modes. I link the guide in the video description. And for those of you asking, yes dear friends, next week we get access to the free forestall class carrier, the CV-59, but it will include only base DCS carrier level features. Hitler have spoken, around 55 minutes ago. Back in January this year, we discussed the future plans for DCS World in our roadmap special episode. Performance-wise, we talked about many things, some already implemented like Edge 2.7, the terrain engine, atmosphere with new clouds and more effects. We discussed modules like the Hind and the Mosquito, both of them already in the sim, as well about the Apache coming as we speak. And it is clear that a massive work has been done in our favorite sim despite the hustle and bustle of the real world. And I mention performance because, with a recent post, ED hinted again at their progress with Vulkan API. They have completed most of the work for a first delivery and made changes to their internal applied graphics API that can shield out the Vulkan code whilst in early testing. This render code supports both DirectX and Vulkan API as different DCS world branches. Now this is big, bringing improvements in performance to both 2D and VR experience in the sim. We are counting the days until that open beta patch when I will jump off my chair and scream it's here, it's now and it's on! And we continue with Razbam again. They have released a great trailer for the MiG-19, the Soviet Union's first true supersonic interceptor that could exceed Mach-1 in level flight. Designed to take on the enemy fighters and bombers at any time of day or night and in any weather conditions. This is one of my favorite Razbam modules and it works fine. It has a few bugs but nothing groundbreaking. Now, for those of you asking why Razbam is releasing now a trailer for their already released product, just keep in mind that DCS World changed since the release of this module, so it makes sense that developers are reproducing their trailers in this new cloud soaring fancy effect environment. Now, towards the end of October, we are expecting more consistent updates for DCS World, and we know that for the Viper, there are and will be multiple adjustments to the angle of attack and G load aspects of the flight module. According to ED, the F-16C sustain rates now more closely match referred data across all airspeeds, altitude, drag indexes and so on. The AMRAM has received a separate INS unit with data link support. We also got to see the new Bullseye update for the Viper, showing off the ability to set a steer point as Bullseye. And to top it off for the F-16 is the Helmet Mountain queuing system alignment presented by Matt Wagners. Then, coming soon to the DCS World Mission Editor is the Draw tool, allowing mission creators to add lines, polygons, text and icons to their briefing maps. This is a blessing for many of us and it's always good to see engine improvements for the sim. And did I say engine improvements? 
Well, it seems that ED has more up their sleeves, as they mention on one of their social media posts that they are working to improve the behavior for infantry and deck crews. Both logics will receive two new behaviors, obstacle avoidance and dynamic reroute, according to the situation. The first phase of the development is complete, and now they are considering cases for when aircrafts are passing by. Also directing aircraft to and from a parking position, avoiding moving aircrafts and different states of service and interruptions. So from all that I see, next week is going to be packed with lots of action in this ES world. And I cannot wait to see you on the other side. That's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Remember to leave us a like if you find our video informative and subscribe in order to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.